Welcome back to the Money Show here on Arise News. As I announce the return of Rotus Odiri. Now for business updates across the globe. Oh Rotus Odiri is back. He's been around the world. <laughs> Just back. back from Guyana. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning. Uh, that, that was our eyes assignment. We're covering the um, the uh, I love that kind of assignment. trade and uh, investment summit. Good to see you all. 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 Uh, yeah, so let's 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 jump into it. Let's jump into it. Um, global news first. Uh, I guess Sam Bankman Fried, as you know, the big news. He's been convicted on seven counts of fraud. Remember, nearly ten billion dollars was lost in uh, misappropriated funds by FTX and its um, hedge fund uh, sister company Alameda Research. So two counts of wire fraud, four counts of conspiracy to commit fraud, one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering. He's facing a maximum sentence of about 115 years. He's going to be sentenced, I think, March 20. His lawyer says that they will um, try to fight or appeal uh, that charge. So that's him. Apple releasing their fourth quarter uh, earnings for uh, 2023. Um, this is their fourth consecutive quarter now decline for Apple. Total revenue, 89 billion. Uh, net income, about 22.6 billion, 10% growth. The iPhone revenue was the only hardware that climbed. Mac revenue fell 34%, iPad revenue down 10%, but although services revenue was up double digits. As you know, they announced that they are increasing their monthly fees for Apple TV and a number of other um, services. We get to uh, the UK. They were held um, their first inaugural AI safety summit, and uh, Elon Musk sat down with um, Rishi Sunak for a one-hour conversation. You know X now, you can put full videos on there. Uh, there was just one part where he said that AI is going to render jobs obsolete. That means a lot of other stuff he said. And my job is to create an incredible education system, whether it's at school, whether it's retraining people yeah. at any point in their career, because ultimately if we've got a skilled population, they'll yeah. be able to keep up with the, the pace of change and have a good life. But, you know, that, it's still a concern. And, you know, you, what would your kind of observation be on, on AI and the impact on labor markets and people's jobs and how they should feel about that as they, as they think about this? Well, I think we are seeing the most disruptive force in history here. Um, you know, where we have for the first time, we will have for the first time something that is smarter than the smartest human. Um, and that, I mean, it's hard to say exactly what that moment is, but, but there will come a point where no job is needed. You can have a job if you want to have a job for sort of personal satisfaction, but the AI will be able to do everything. So, I don't know if that makes people comfortable or uncomfortable. It, 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 <laughs> uh. There was a lot that was discussed there. Uh, some black girl magic uh, news. Sarah Bond is uh, the new uh, president of uh, Xbox following the announcement, of course, that Microsoft had closed that deal. She's the first black female president of a major uh, gaming uh, company. Uh, she has a bachelor's in, uh, from ec in economics from Yale, yay, uh, MBA from Harvard Business School, started her career at McKinsey in Consulting, former vice president at Xbox, and now also sits on uh, multiple uh, boards. And we have reached out to her, try to see if we can get a chance to talk to her as well. Uh, moving on to the African um, continent, um, Mr. Kagame, president of Rwanda, uh, the Global Summit announced that they've uh, removed um, visa restrictions for all Africa. Africans. Nobody, the travel and tourism industry has recovered strongly, but the high cost of their travel to Africa and within Africa remains a barrier. Implementation of the single African air transport to market is therefore an important priority. We also removed visa restrictions for citizens of every African country as well as many other countries. Actually, vacationed in Kigali for the first time last year, lovely city, and I think this is going to do a lot for skilled laborers for, for Rwanda. Of course, there might be risk of also just opening up your 
borders to everybody, but it's still a good thing. And of course, you talked about trying to ease travel restrictions across Africa. Uh, we come to Nigeria. Central Bank <clears throat> has started settling some of its um, forward uh, obligations to a number of banks. I actually spoke to a couple of folks in uh, Treasury departments of a number of banks, and they've begun to settle some of these amounts. We don't have a full amount yet, but they're beginning to address this. We know, of course, from the financials, how much is being owed forwards. Of course, our obligations where, you know, you're going to be collecting money and plan to set, settle it later on down the line in FX. And of course, this was, you know, as we know, how it was hampering our um, FX reserves. So the signaling is good from the central bank. Of course, they're also expecting that $10 billion in FX liquidity, which we understand could come from um, oil, oil, forward oil sales, and also from uh, maybe a loan from the Middle East. So still working on where, the, you know, details are from that. But we are seeing the impacts on uh, the currency, at least in, the, in, this, in this term. So at the, at the NAF, um, automotive, the automotive foreign exchange, uh, at NAFEM, the, the foreign exchange market, um, autonomous, excuse me, I said automotive. <laughs> autonomous foreign exchange market. We saw the Naira appreciate to 798, although there was an intraday high of about 1,000 Naira to the dollar, and then it fell uh, to 798. On the parallel market, it's, you know, from about 1,200, it's come down to about, you know, either 798 at the parallel, uh, no, actually, that's incorrect, sorry. That should be 1,000, that should be 798 at NAFEM, and then 1,165 at the parallel market. Also, the P2P, uh, that's the Binance Exchange, 798 uh, there uh, as well. Um, do you guys remember my talk on Oppenheim and education? Since you're all talking about education so much, do you, do you remember when yeah. I said that that, that movie did so much to talk about the, what the education means for, um, yeah, you know, and um, it just, you know, the president at his retreat was saying that, uh, you know, education is very important. We've seen waffling on the money for the yachts now being applied to um, the education uh, loan, which is now, ten, you know, 10.5, was initially 5 billion. Um, and yeah, and then finally, uh, so the, the, just a glance at the Nigerian economy. So just, just to be clear, the, the Nigerian economy uh, isn't tight. Banking, right? If we take a look at quarterly uh, GDP growth and also annual GDP growth, you'll see that the Nigerian economy, while it is not quite where population growth is, mm. it's important to just you know put this there that look at 2.5% quarter three, the toughest part, portion we saw this quarter was the uh, Naira redesign issues where we saw Naira scarcity, but on a quarterly basis, annual basis, not in recession, not facing depression, that is our update. Okay, so that's the best way to start. Like yeah. The economy for a lot of people is tanking. There's been mm. a depression as regards, you know, business climate for a lot of people. Businesses are suffering. Some of them are shortened up, occasioned by high prices. That's one. Also, the overall general outlook and feel for the citizens of the country. It's been depressing, to say the very least, at a point in time like this. Yes. Quarterly growth, you're saying, yes, on the GDP uh, growth range, yes. But when you look at all the parameters that really affects the people of an economy, it's not looking any good for them. Uh, these are these, all of this, at this point in time, at this point in time, then, if you also go ahead and look at the fact that the way dollar flow came into our economy mm -hmm. three years ago, it's not the same way any longer. And I'll give you an instance. If you read the medium-term expenditure framework, 115 billion about three years ago of dollar inflow that came to the economy, from that is tanked to about 90 billion to about 74 billion dollars last year. All right. So when you see the parameter, the overview parameter, it is tanking. I get this GDP growth. But the reality is mm. different from the people. As regards what they are doing to the economy, to the Naira, yes, I appreciate that too, but I'm also if you and I'll tell you why. Some of these monies we have gone to raise are futurely securitized against earnings from NLNG. We all know what we have as regards revenue problems in this country. Mm. Okay. How do we pay the future shortfalls of those revenues that will not be coming in. Also, when you read the medium term expenditure framework, the amount of money that we'll borrow is also there because we actually need to borrow to be able to sustain the economy. So yes, we've been able to beat back this 
surge on the Naira. But all of this we are doing, when the future comes, what do we do as regards that? Those are the questions. So, so again, just, you know, we'll, I guess we'll disagree. But when you say something tanks, yeah. right, it's, it is a precipitous drop. So we had, of course, the Great Depression where the UK, US economy fell by about 10%. Yeah. Well, the economy is, 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 is stable where it is right now. Doctor, please go ahead. No, no. Oh, I am. Yeah. Congratulations to uh, Sarah Bond. Of course, when I saw the headlines, I was like, yes. yes, for women and, of course, black women. I hope you do get the opportunity to have a conversation with her. She has an excellent track record um, in terms of her career and in the corporate world. So, brilliant one. But let me come to visas and the African country, uh, African continent. I say that because we've had this conversation, especially as to how to maximize or to leverage the FCTA and um, trade across African continents and the fact that it, how can we talk about trade when connectivity and you know traveling um, between countries is it's easier to go out to go to Europe than it is to travel to an African country yep. beyond the visa restrictions is also the mode of transportation to go so great move by Rwanda opening up its doors I think it's going to be fantastic for the economy yes there might be the other side of oh, trying to manage immigration because Rwanda is actually quite a beautiful um, country in terms of how well managed it is but beyond Rwanda Kenya mm. has also said they're opening up their borders um, they're going to have visa free uh, from I think end of this year, December 1, 2023, South Africa and Ghana yeah. now enjoy visa waiver such that from Ghana, you can travel to South Africa for 90 days visa free, apply mm. online. Why? What is wrong? Why can't we have that same agreement with Nigeria? I say that because we know we know how difficult it is to go to South Africa from Nigeria. Right. I, I, I mean, I'm sure that um, in terms of reciprocity, that's in place. But how do we talk about trade on this continent and maximize what we have within beyond going outside? if we don't sort out that issue around travel, what's this distrust of one another in mm. terms of giving visas? Yes, we have the reputations and all that. But if we don't come together as a continent, there's so much more we can gain working together. We look at the European Union, look at NATO, look at organizations who've come together and have formed a strong alliance, and it has helped trade significantly. So what I'm saying, in a sense, is perhaps other countries, you know, the, the giants, the Nigerias, the South Africa, should take a um, cue from President Ruto, who said there's so much potential in trade by opening the v um, borders, and also Rwanda as well. Mm, indeed. Okay, first, let me start with the visa regime. No, talking about Nigeria. Nigeria has special visa provisions, visa-free provisions, but for business people, okay, who invest in Nigeria, who can come in and out. So it's not as if we're out of that loop. But what should be noted was that in 2016, the African Union talked about the idea of an African passport to promote trade, to promote integration and cooperation in Africa. The African uh, Free Trade Continental uh, Agreement, yeah, AFTA, yeah. as it is otherwise known, also has that objective. What we have seen over time, however, is that certain countries have taken the lead in that regard. Republic of Benin, Gambia, Seychelles. These are countries that you can travel to without visa. Now you have Rwanda. President uh, Ruto of Kenya says December 31, Kenya will also be visa-free. All of that will seem to promote the idea of African integration, yeah. which is an, uh, an important objective, both for the African Union and the Continental Free Trade Agreement. Now, as for President uh, Paul Kagame, he's always been criticized for being a benevolent dictator. We mm -hmm. have done so on this program again and again. But he provides leadership. One of the things he has done is to try to address the challenge of ethnic division in that country. In Rwanda today, you don't identify yourself as an ethnic person. Exactly. You are just a Rwanda. Exactly. Okay? Number two, you know, in Rwanda, Rwanda he has turned Rwanda into a major investment destination. Mm -hmm. He has turned Rwanda into a major tourist destination. And this is part of that move. We may say, yes, he's a sea tight man, and there are human rights abuses. Yeah. If you go to Kigali, if you walk, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, you see policemen hanging around you. You know, so it's a police state, but it provides good governance. Which takes us back to the original argument about trade-offs. Where do you have trade-offs mm. in running a democratic country? 
Do you trade off part of your freedom mm. to have a good society? Do you trade off part of, uh, you know, other things in order for you to have efficiency within the system? One of those things we, we you know, they teach at the Aspen Institute at the Nigeria and also at the Nigerian uh, Leadership uh, Institute. But Rwanda seems to be working. Mm. What are the lessons that other countries can learn from Rwanda? I'm not going to suggest that Nigeria should make Nigeria visa free. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> but we have a, a system in place that encourages business people uh, to come to Nigeria. Finally, about the summit at Bletchley Park that you referred to. I, I think I referred to it yesterday mm. during the newspaper review about artificial intelligence. Yep. Elon Musk has been argue, arguing that artificial intelligence is going to lead to the end of work. Yep. We render all of us uh, <laughs> jobless. Uh, <laughs> no, after all, in uh, Qatar, I think, mm. AI-generated persons are now on television anchors. Right? <laughs> right? Okay, and that, that is what he's saying, that AI is going to be very disruptive. But the bigger news coming out of that conversation and the summit at Bletchley Park is that there now seems to be a consensus that AI, artificial intelligence, must be regulated. Yeah. And the big tech companies, they say yes, they, they also think so. Countries in the EU, the US, uh, uh, Rena, uh, that's her name, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ghana Raymond, the uh, Commerce Secretary yeah. also said the U.S. is going to set up an institute to police artificial intelligence. And I, I guess, I hope that will work, yeah. both at the level of ethics and operations, and also at the level of making sure that robots do not, uh, do not displace all of us. Exactly. I went to France once, uh, to one restaurant. Uh, they were uh, serving food electronically. <laughs> uh, there was no human being yeah. attended to us. Nothing and those are jobs. Those are jobs lost. Those are jobs. Yeah, those are job yeah. losses. Yeah. 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 I wanted the interaction with How human beings. <laughs> they would just say, uh, punch one computer, <laughs> tell us what you want. <laughs> then something will roll <laughs> to your, this thing, you will collect your food. Yeah. You will say, collect it. Ah, that human interaction right. is important. Indeed. I hope a day will not come when uh, robots will be doing this job. I hope not. The emotion, the passion. Indeed. The kind of anyway. you can, your robots can't replace a Dr. Abbasi, for example. I mean, come on. Come on. Yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.